Hello and welcome to another spectacular thing. Today we are going to turn a Raspberry Pi into a local Git server so that we can have a Git server on our local network. And to do that we're going to start with Raspberry Pi Imager version 1.6. So you can see it here. Raspberry Pi Imager version 1.6. Now the reason that we're using Raspberry Pi Imager instead of Belena Etcher is that this comes with a handy nifty feature if you do control shift X and this is Windows only you get advanced options and in the advanced options you can disable overscan which we won't need because we're going to be a headless you can set the host name you can enable SSH you can configure Wi-Fi and you can set local settings all before you even run the Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. And that's all there is to it. Let's click Save. Now let's choose our operating system. You have quite a few choices in here and we're not going to choose the default uh, Raspberry Pi OS. We're going to select the Raspberry Pi OS Lite. This is a very small 600 megabyte download that installs really fast on your Raspberry Pi. So we'll select that, choose storage, and then we'll write. And yes, we're sure we want to write. And I'll fast forward so you don't have to watch this. Okay, and now that it's finished verifying, it's going to mount the boot partition and update its information finalize it and eject it. Cool, that's all there is to that. Let's go ahead and take the Raspberry Pi or let's take the SD card and put it in our Raspberry Pi. Okay, now we want to SSH into our Raspberry Pi. Yes, that's the fingerprint. Now you'll notice that we didn't have a password and that's because we added the key during the uh, initialization of the SD card. So the first thing we want to do on any Raspberry Pi that we set up is we want to update and upgrade it. And this will take just a minute. Okay, now that we're updated, let's go ahead and install Git. We don't need the full package, so we'll just say Git Core. And that's just tiny, 33 megabytes. Next, we want to add a user called git, called git. Give it a password. You can skip all the additional information. And then let's switch user just to make sure that everything got set up properly. And it has home directory. Good. Let's exit out of that, clear our screen. Next, we want to create a folder called .ssh and we want to copy our authorized keys file into that. So you see here in our in our home directory in the .ssh folder we have an authorized keys file and that has our um, public key for our local machine in there. You can add others also. Now let's make sure I did that right. Now, if you look at the extended attributes on authorized keys, you can see it's owned by the user pi and the group root. And if we look at that on our new one, you can see that it's owned by root and root. We want to change that. So to do that, we say sudo change own git root slash home slash git slash dot ssh slash authorized keys. Then let's check the SSH folder itself. You can see the SSH folder is owned by root also. We want that to be git. So we want to sudo change own uh, git colon git slash home slash git slash dot SSH. Next we want to change user back to the git git user. And we want to change, or we want to create a folder for our project. So we're going to say, make dir 
project dash one dot get. And in that folder, we're going to say get init dash dash bear. And this will create an empty git repository in this folder with no intention of having the files outside of git. So this is just your git server. Okay, so let's go ahead and exit out of this user. And there's one step that I like to do. Now we're done with the server, but there's one extra step that I like to do. And that is I like to change the shell. So sudo change shell dash s dollar sign parentheses command dash v get dash shell get. And what that does is it makes it so that git can't have an interactive shell. It only allows certain git commands to be activated from this user. So let's try that out. If I say git change user git and enter in the correct password, you'll see fatal interactive git shell is not enabled. You can add extra commands in the git shell commands file, but we're not going to do that here. So let's exit and clear our screen. Let's go to a temp directory and make a dir for project one. Okay. And inside this project one, we're going to just touch a readme. And we're going to, of course, we're going to get in it this folder. So now you can see that we have one untracked file. Let's add that file and we'll commit it there. Now what we want to do is we've got this stored and we've got a git repository on my local machine. We want to get that copied over to our server so that other people can get access to it. So to do that, we want to set up a remote. So we say git remote add, and then what is our server? Well, it's our git user at the name of the server, colon, the directory. And that's it. Oh, we need to name the, we need to name the remote also. I'm sorry. So it's git remote add name origin. Helps if you spell origin correctly. <laughs> and that's it. Now if we say git remote, it'll list the origin remote. And if we say verbose, you can see that for both fetch and push, we go to git Octavia project one git. Now that we have our remote set up, let's go ahead and push this code to the remote. And that's all there is to it. It's Logged, it logs in to our remote server using SSH, and because we have the authorized keys file in there, the local pub, the public key is matched on the server, and so it allows us in without a password. And then we can push all of our code to the Raspberry Pi. And that's it for setting up a, a Git server on your local system. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, that's great. But I want all the extra tools that come with GitHub. Well, there is a way to do that, and I will show that in the next video. So please stay tuned for the next video where I will download and install GitLab on the Raspberry Pi. But for now, this is how you install a Git server on your local Raspberry Pi. Please, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to my channel, and you can find more videos like this on this channel. Hit the like button and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.